guys, today mommy will talk about mongrel. Mongrel. Have you ever felt like you're not doing enough as a mom or as a parent? Do you feel like you're not doing things right in your parenthood journey? Or do you feel like you're not making the right decisions as a mom? If yes, then you're most likely stuck with mom guilt. Hi, this is April and today we're going to talk about how to overcome just that. But before anything else, if you're new to this channel, Siri and Fam, we post content featuring our kid and our family, teaching other kids fun and valuable stuff and sharing our top parenting tips for other parents out there and sharing good vibes all your way. If you like content like this, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to get notified whenever we post something new. Now back to the topic, mom guilt. Either you have heard of it or you're one of the many moms suffering from it, moms are better off without mom guilt. But totally getting rid of mom guilt in our mommyhood is easier said than done. Now what is mom guilt to begin with? It simply means that feeling of not doing enough as a mom or as a parent, not making the right decisions, or not doing your best in your parenthood journey. In short, you feel like you're not doing enough for your baby, like you're not spending enough time, you're not engaging with him or her enough, or you're not doing mom duties the standard or the best way. Mom guilt can be triggered by things like letting your kids have too much screen time, choosing to formula feed then breastfeed, spending too much time at work, or seeing other moms posting their motherhood highlights and how they're raising their babies their best way possible. In a way, mom guilt can be productive as it gives us a sign on what we can improve or what we can eliminate. For example, if you feel guilty for letting your child eat too much junk food or sweets, that gut feel that it's wrong to keep on doing that could have a productive result as you might end up regulating your child's intake and actually doing something about it. However, some forms of mom guilt can be totally unhealthy, especially if they stem from listening to what other people have to say. You may have this know-it-all neighbor or relative that just makes a comment on everything you do. Though some of these comments may be constructive and helpful, if there are too many people who give the remarks and you feel like you need to pay attention to every one of them, that's where it becomes unhealthy. You can't possibly follow everyone's advice as not all of them will work for you. That's why it's very important to pay attention to tip number one on how to overcome mom guilt. Tip number one, know your truth. You need to know the values and the priorities that matter the most to you as a mom or as a parent. For example, if what matters most to you is your child's absolute health, you may totally cut down on sugar and junk food. But if you value your kids' freedom and enjoyment more, you may be more tolerant as to these matters. If you value your kid's future more, you may choose to spend more time at work to ensure that. But if you value the present more and you think that it's more important to spend more time with them while they're still a baby, then you might choose to work from home, work part-time, or just become a full-time mom. Whatever your decisions are, they're going to be different from the decisions of other moms and other parents because their decisions are based on their identity and their own truth, and your decisions are based on your own identity and your own truth as well. This leads us to the next point. Tip number two is establish your own trusted circle. While we mentioned to kind of ignore the comments of those who have a lot to say, and sometimes they say it in an unsolicited way, it's also important to have that trusted circle of friends or fellow moms who trust and who support your decisions all the way. This circle is composed of people who won't judge your choices and who respect your style as a mom. Narrowing down your circle helps so you can know who to listen to and who to consider as mere background noise. Those who give comments, advice, or remarks that aren't really relevant to your life shouldn't necessarily be hated or shunned too. What they're saying is just a reflection of their own truth, their own beliefs, their own personalities and backgrounds, and as much as possible, just respect their own preferences to as much as you want them to respect yours. They could actually mean well, so if they do have a point, try to acknowledge their points but know that you don't necessarily have to listen to everyone and you're not obliged to follow their advice. In the end, you do you. Number three, trust your intuition and that of your child. Every mom is different and every child is different. What works for other moms might not work for you and what works for other children may not work for your child or your children too. 
Just like you should have your own truth as a parent, you should also have your own truth as a family unit. You will have to adjust your parenting style, not according to what is ideal in the eyes of the world and what works best for other moms, but according to what works best for you and your kiddo. Number four, self-care is a mom's responsibility too. Self-care is not an option or a luxury. You can't possibly function as a source of happiness and care to your child, to your husband, and to your family if you're burnt out and dead tired. You need a recharge and only you know how to do that. Self-care is different for every mom. It could be having a massage, going to the salon, indulging in a shopping spree, or just some quiet time alone with a book. Whatever it is that makes you feel alive, do just that. You're a better mom if you treat yourself better too. Number five, establish proper work-life balance. Now there's this meme that I came across long ago. It says something like, we expect women to work like they don't have children and raise children like they don't have work. I had this dilemma when Siri was still a baby, but I no longer feel the same way. But back then, whenever I'm working, I feel kind of guilty because I feel like I should be with my baby. And whenever I'm with my baby, I feel guilty as well. As I feel like I should be working on some backlogs or the other tasks that I have to do. This is especially the case for freelancers or if you're a mom working from home. But you can break free from this by accepting that yes, motherhood is a part of who you are, but it's not the only part. There should be a balance and you need to schedule time properly to concentrate on one thing at a time well. If you're with your child, do your best to be mindful and savor the present moment. And if you're working, do your best to focus on the work at hand too. That's easier said than done, but with proper practice and scheduling and home arrangement, it's possible to strike a good work-life balance while staying guilt-free. Number six, you can't have it all. You can't have 100% time with your child at the same time 100% profit or salary. You can't have all the time for yourself to do what you want, either for your work or for your hobby, and also expect being there for your child 100% to witness his or her milestones. You can't have the benefits of both extremes. Learn to get comfortable not giving your 100% to everything at the same time. And remember that 80% is usually enough. Number seven, social media doesn't depict the entirety of other mom's story. If you feel like you're not doing enough as a parent because other moms are seemingly doing it better based on what they post online, stop. We all want to document the best moments of our motherhood, but we don't usually share or document the worst. We all have the best motherhood moments, but we all have at least one motherhood pet peeve that we don't like. Personally, I hate it every time it gets hard to put Siri to bed, and the rest I'm perfectly okay with. The thing is, every motherhood journey is not 100% easy or 100% happy. Exhaustion, confusion, mom guilt can all be natural part of the process. But that doesn't mean it's not wonderful. In fact, all the mix of the bad and the good makes motherhood all the more worthwhile and beautiful. As long as you're doing your best to do enough, that's enough. That means enough time to spend with your family, enough care as to their health and their future, and enough time to take care of you as well. It's all about balance, and when there's balance, there's clarity. Hopefully this has been helpful. Do share and subscribe if you want similar content and more. But most importantly, if you found this video valuable, smash the like button down below. That will really help us reach more parents out there who might also be interested in this video. And that's basically for now. Thank you and till next time. Bye.